Hello everybody, my name is Jay. I'm one of the expert PTE teachers here at E2 Language. What we're going to do in this class is look at the keys to a high oral fluency score in speaking, which, if you don't know, makes up a third of your speaking score on all of the tasks. So it's critical. It's not pronunciation, it's not the sounds that you're making, but it's how you speak, how you deliver your speech, okay? So over the last five weeks, I've taken you through individual things like word stress and sentence stress, etc. In this one, we're going to bring it all together. We're going to recap what that was. And then at the end, I'm going to talk about a like a, I don't know, the ultimate way to improve your oral fluency. So let's have a look at this PTE speaking super science. Ultimately, what we're trying to do on test day is appease the speaking algorithm. And the way that we do this is we speak naturally because the algorithm has been built uh, according to natural principles of spoken language. So if you speak more naturally like a native English speaker, then you're going to get a higher score. And there's a science behind this. You could think about it as tips and tricks and stuff like that, but really if we break it down, there is a science behind all of these principles. So let me take you through the first key. The first key is word stress. You need to get this right. When I talk about word stress, I'm talking about the emphasis we place on a specific syllable in a word. So for a single syllable word like dog, there is no word stress or the stress is just on the entire word. But if you look at robot, for example, the emphasis, the stress is placed on that first sound, that first syllable, robot. It's not robot, it's robot. And for fantastic, the syllable emphasis is on tas, fantastic, and helicopter, and personality. So you've got to get your word stress right, the computer likes that. Let's do a little quiz, and into the comments below, I want you to tell me which sound do you stress? Do you say building? Or do you say building? Uh, actually, now that I think about this, it's kind of weird because the noun building, uh, the thing, anyway, what I'm talking about here is a noun, a thing, because the other one is the verb, I'm building something. Yeah, they both have the same stress. You can work it out. So is this correct? Building or building? 1A or 1B? Into the comments below, do you say important, important, or important? Which is correct, 2A, 2B, or 2C? Let's do three. Do I say experimental, or do I say experimental? Which is correct, 3A or 3B? So the first one is 1A, we say building. Number two, the emphasis is on 2B, important, important, poor gets the emphasis. And number three, the emphasis is in 3B, experimental. This is experimental. Emphasis goes on men. Hopefully you got that. The second key to oral fluency is sentence stress, that is, on which word do you place more emphasis? Not the sound, but the entire word. On which word do you place more emphasis to give it a specific meaning? Let me go through these. I could say, John will drive to the cinema tonight. And I'm emphasizing that it's John and not Bill. For B, I could say, John will drive to the cinema tonight. He's changed his mind. Or C, I could say, John will drive to the cinema tonight, not ride his bike. For D, I could say, John will drive to the cinema tonight, not the restaurant. Or E, I could say, John will drive to the cinema tonight, not tomorrow morning. So you can see that by putting emphasis on a particular word, we're actually uh, uh, giving it specific meaning. Let's do a little quiz. I want you to tell me A, B, C, D, or E, which word am I emphasizing? Ready? John will drive to the cinema tonight. 
Hopefully you picked up the emphasis there is on C, drive. I put slightly more emphasis on drive. Okay, just before we look at key number three, guys, our YouTube channel is really fantastic. Uh, it's got lots and lots of, uh, we, we've helped thousands, tens of thousands of people pass their PT test from our YouTube channel, which is really cool. But what's even better and where you can find all of these methods lessons nicely organized with free practice questions is in our platform, which is e2language.com, which you can sign up for free at. So you might wanna do that. Plus, if you upgrade, there's lots of cool stuff like live classes, speaking and writing feedback, one-on-one -on -one tutorials, additional methods, etc. So do check out e2language.com. Okay, let's look at key three. This is chunking. This is another thing you need to do on test day. When I talk about chunking, I'm actually talking about two things. I'm talking about putting specific words together, grouping specific words, and also pausing. Because if I group, say I group these three words here and these four words here, there's naturally going to be a pause between those two groups. So chunking and pausing are kind of the same thing. Let me read this and I want you to notice where I chunk or what I chunk and where I pause and then I'll get you to practice it. Does it really matter whether people speak with an accent as long as they can be easily understood? Many people now believe that in an increasingly globalized world, we should accept variations in pronunciation, that is accent. However, there's no point in speaking with an accent if people can't understand you, is there? So what I've done there is grouped specific words together, pause for like, I don't know, less than a second, some of them maybe a second, but this is also what the algorithm needs you to do. You don't just go ba 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 and you don't go ba 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 ba, that is also wrong. You need to group and chunk and pause at the right time. By the way, I'm focusing here on sort of read aloud type questions, but this applies to describe image and retell lecture and repeat sentence, all of the speaking tasks, okay? Cool, now it's your turn. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds. I want you to chunk and pause appropriately. Cool, how did you go with that one? Hopefully you paused and chunked appropriately. Now, just before we move on to the next speaking key, the next oral fluency key, I just want to dismiss a myth. Some people say that in the PTE, the faster you read, the higher your tempo is, the higher your score is. This is, I'll say this politely, it's not true, it's bogus, it's, it's, a, it's silly, it's stupid, I'm sorry, it's stupid. Don't read at a fast tempo. Read at a moderate or speak at a moderate tempo, okay? Not too quickly, not too slowly. That's the simple rule for tempo. Okay, cool. Let's look at connected four now. Uh, connected four. Key four. Key four. Connected speech. That's what I mean. Okay, key number four. Connected speech means when we read naturally or speak naturally, naturally, what we do is we sometimes link words together. For example, if I, I, I don't say an egg, I don't say, can you please give me an egg? I say a neg. Can you please give me an egg, a neg, a neg? It's almost like the ah uh and the n get separated and it becomes a neg like that. That's natural and that's what you should be doing. Remember the algorithm is just searching for natural uh, spoken language. So that's one way that we connect speech. Also, sometimes with specific uh, pairings of words, we add an extra sound. Like if I say true or false, true, war, false, true, war, false, there's sort of a what sound that appears there. Sometimes we just delete sounds because it's difficult to say used to. So we just say used to, I used to. I used to, and the D disappears, that's natural. 
Sometimes we create new sounds, like if I say, don't you know, don't you, ch, ch, ch. I don't say, don't you know, I say, don't you know, that's natural. And sometimes we just combine the same sound. So if we have social life, two L sounds, l, l, what I do is I delete one and I just say social life. How's your social life? Okay, so this is connected speech. This is important for oral fluency. Let me read this to you and then I'll get you to do the same thing. I want you to pay attention to how, uh, when I read this or say this naturally, how the words connect. So does it really matter whether people speak with an accent as long as they can be easily understood? Many people now believe that in an increasingly globalized world, we should accept variations in pronunciation, that is accent. However, there's no point in speaking with an accent if people can't understand you, is there? I kind of emphasize that a little bit more than was natural, but you can see actually what spoken sound actually looks like here because the way it's written and the way that it sounds is yeah, there's quite a bit of difference there, isn't there? Cool, I'm gonna give you 30 seconds now. I want you to try, read this, thinking about chunking and pausing and word stress and sentence stress and also connected speech. Cool, all right, hopefully you did that appropriately. All right, let's look at key number five here. This applies specifically to Southeast Asian languages like Bahasa Indonesia, Bahasa Malayu, uh, Thai, Vietnamese, but possibly your language as well. This is where we need to make sure that we're saying the final sound of the word, because in some languages you cut it off and in English, a lot of the grammatical meaning is actually applied to the final sound of the word. And if you cut that end off the end of the word, we miss out on all the good grammar and all the meaning that that grammar has, right? Let me give you a few examples here. So let's look at this verbed column first. So I say wanted. Of course, the d -ind sound, the ind sound tells me I'm talking about past tense. Wanted, ed, ed. And when I say hoped, hoped, t, 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 I actually use a t sound there. And when I say played, played, d, 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 I use a d sound there. So all of those sounds, ed, t, and d, they're all critical that I make sure I say them so the computer hears them because that's also accounting for my grammar score. Same thing with he, she, it, eats or he, she, it sits, s, s, or he, she, it knows, s, s. I need to make sure that I hit that s sound appropriately. And it's the same thing with plural nouns, more than one cup, two cups, more than one spoon, two spoons, plates, etc. So for those of you, especially Vietnamese, Thai, uh, Indonesian, uh, you guys need to make sure that you're hitting those final sounds because if you're not, you're going to lose a score on pronunciation. You're going to lose score on scores, scores on grammar as well. Okay, critical there, critical. Okay, now the final key is the super key. This is the thing that if you do this appropriately, all of the other keys will sort of combine and come together. And that is that you need to speak with meaning. Let me just give you a little lecture here about speaking with meaning. What you wanna do when you're describing the graph or retelling the lecture or reading aloud or repeating the sentence is trying to convey as much meaning as you possibly can. Sorry, I've got something in my eye. Convey as much meaning as you possibly can when you speak. So you need to, this is kind of strange. 
But what you're doing is you're kind of feeling the meaning as you say it, right? And the more that you do that, the more that you will naturally pause and chunk, the more that you will naturally connect your speech, hopefully the more that you will naturally use word stress and sentence stress appropriately, okay? This is the thing that you need to concentrate on most. So don't just say stuff. Don't just say words. You're not just saying words. That's not speaking. You're saying words with as much meaning as you can possibly muster up. Okay, so let's practice it. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to read this paragraph again, and this time, say it like you mean it. Cool, 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 cool. I think I could hear your meaning from over here, which is good. All right, uh, so what we have just looked at is one third of your speaking score, the oral fluency section. And what we did is we broke down oral fluency into its parts and we looked at it scientifically and that's how you get better at, well, that's how you get a higher PT score. It's also how you just speak better English. So just be wary of tips and tricks and memorize questions and stuff like that. There is actually a science behind all of this that we teach you at e2language.com and we teach you very quickly, by the way. Um, as I mentioned before, we have some really good stuff on YouTube and I'm glad you're here, but everything is over in the platform on e2language.com, all of the really good stuff. Uh, cool, hope that was helpful. Um, yeah, thanks, I'll see you soon.